This video is going to walk you through how to use the Cluzo Cytobank plugin to upload processed files to the cloud for further analysis. So to begin, what we're going to do is we're going to import files into the Clusa analysis list. There's multiple different ways to do this, but the preferred approach is to open up a Windows Explorer folder that contains your data files. And you can do this with one data file or multiple data files at the same time. And what we have to do is simply drag and drop this into the analysis list to load this data file into Clusa. Once the data file is loaded, we can come over here and we can click on this parameters tab. And this will open up all of the names and descriptions of our different parameters within the data file. We can come in here and we can adjust the names and descriptions of the parameters if we need to. So if we didn't annotate what our parameters are, we can do that within Clusa. We can also come in here and we can edit the loaded parameters. So if I want to unload all of my height parameters in this case, I can do so. And then I can simply come in and reselect any height parameters that I would want to load. And when I click OK, you'll see that it adjusts which parameters are loaded within the Clusa analysis. So once I have that complete, I can click that X and I can start to add my plots into my Clusa analysis. And what we're going to do with these plots is we're going to adjust our compensations, we're going to apply some scaling transformations, and we're also going to pre-gate our populations of interest. So to do so, I can come up here and click on dot to insert a dot plot. If you prefer density or contour, we also have those options available. And then where it says choose a parameter, I can just click on that. You can see it gives me all of the available parameters within my data set to choose. I'm going to start with my live dead parameter, and then I'm going to select to choose to load in the logical scaling of that live dead parameter. And then for my Y parameter, I'm going to choose my side scatter and I will make that a linear parameter. Now, if it loads like this and you feel like you want to scale it a little bit differently, you can right click on a plot and it's gonna introduce this radial menu. And from the radial menu, you see you have all these different options that we can come in and we can adjust. But if I come over here, this brings me to the data window and this is where I can adjust my X and Y parameter scaling. For my Y parameter, which is my side scatter, you can see I can come in and manually adjust the minimum and maximum of this range, or I can click on auto, and the software is gonna try and auto scale that. When I click on this X, you can see how it auto scales. If you don't like the way that it auto scales, you can come in and manually adjust it a little bit further. And then you can see for this live dead cell marker, what we have is we have logical scaling, which means that we're able to use this logical scaling bar to adjust our bi-exponential transition point very, very easily. So it's a really cool, fast, unique way to scale our data. Once I have this created, if I want to create a gate, and so I want to focus only on the living cells, I can come up here where it says gates and tools. And then I can select from all the different gate types that we have available in Calusa. I'm going to choose a rectangular gate, and I'm just going to click to insert that onto my plot. And I'm going to grab all of the living cells, so come in and adjust it. After gates created, if I right click on the gate, you can see I have the option under this display to change the gate name if I want to. I can also change the gate color as well. Go ahead and click enter and it changes the gate name right there for me. I can drag this around the plot and have it positioned anywhere that I would like. Now, if I wanna create a plot that's based off of just the living cells, I can come back up here into the plots and tables. I'm gonna select another dot plot and I'm going to choose my parameters. So now I'm gonna focus on my forward side scatter. So again, my linear forward scatter and my linear side scatter. And if I want to scale this forward scatter parameter, I can right click, go to the data section and click auto for my forward scatter parameter. And you can see it very nicely fit the data into the scaling now. And so if I only wanna focus on our living cells, I can come up here and where it says ungated, if I just simply left click, I can go ahead and select my living cells gate so you can see I have the option available to me here. And if we just want to focus on the lymphocytes, which is this population down here, you can see it's kind of difficult to break that out from what's going on on this lower end and from these monocytes. And so the way that I can 
easily identify my populations is by adjusting my resolution. So if I right click on this plot again, you can select this computer screen, which stands for display. You can see you have this plot resolution slider bar. So if I just increase my plot resolution, you can see how much easier it breaks up the definition between these populations. So we can adjust that as much as we want to get whatever break of pop or however we want to display the data. So if this is how I like the data, I can continue forward here. If I want to undo anything, Clusic has unlimited undo and redo. So I can undo it and then I can also redo it back if I would like. And if I want to focus on this population moving forward, I can come in and I can create another gate. And this time I'm going to choose a polygon gate. So click on the polygon gate, and every time I click within the software, it creates a vertice for the polygon gate. And I'll just double click to close that gate. And then again, right click on the gate, and this is where I can come in and I can give my gate a different name. And I can also adjust the color if I want to. And there you can see, again, I can move my gate name to anywhere on my plot. If I want to adjust the resolution after I've created a gate in the plot, you can always do that. Again, if I want to come in here just for display purposes and create a little bit better of an image, I can come in and adjust the slider bar. Okay. And then if I want to, from this point forward, if I need to adjust the gate, I can come in here and I can click on any one of these vertices if I want to focus a little bit more tightly on that population of cells. And then if I want to create one more further population, I can come back up into my plots and tables, select another dot plot, select the gate. So this time I'm going to be focusing on limps. And then I want to look at forward scatter area. Where's forward scatter width? And I have this population. Again, if I need to adjust my scaling to have it fit a little bit better, I can do the auto. Now you can see it's scaled a little bit better. I can manually come in here and adjust the scaling as well if I would like. But I'm gonna apply my final gate to this population and just focus on the single cells. And if I would, again, like to change this name just so I know what I'm doing, Right click on the gate. Oops. And now I have my single cells gate. So now if I want to explore further into my populations, I can always do that. So I can come up with another plot, change my gates. So I'm looking at my single cell gates. You can choose any one of your parameters at this point. So if I want to look at my HLADR PE versus, um, let's look at one of our BV filters and we can come in and we can adjust our by exponential transition point, make sure we like the way everything's scaled. And we also have the ability to adjust our compensation. So if you need to adjust your compensation post acquisition, you can use the compensation plot sliders. You can see that these are going to be available so you can adjust your compensation from that window. You can also come in and adjust your compensation from over here. And this is going to show you your entire compensation matrix where you can come in and you can adjust the values of your compensation matrix. Once we have the data properly scaled, gated, and compensated, we need to use the Clusa Cytobank plugin to send the data from my local resource up into the Cytobank cloud. So I come up here under my plugins tab and I have my Cytobank plugin. If you need help installing the Cytobank plugin, you can view the instructions on our website. Within this login screen, I need to select my subdomain if I'm on a premium or an enterprise server. And then I need to log in with my Cytobank's username and password. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Once I log in, it's going to log me into my Cytobank specific account. And so now what I can do 
is I can come in and I can select the data set that I would like to upload into the cloud. I can select which gate I would like to upload. So in my example, I want to only upload the single cells up into the cloud for further analysis. It's going to give me all of the different parameters and all of the descriptions of the parameters that are going to be uploaded into the cloud. And you can see that it's going to be uploading the specific parameters that I had loaded within Calusa. So I unloaded those height parameters. Those height parameters are not going to be uploaded into the cloud, but all of the parameters that I had loaded within Calusa will be. I can decide if I would like to include my compensation matrix, and so I can upload compensated data into the cloud, and I can also apply any of the logical transformations that I've done on the data, which means that any of the scaling that I've done locally with the logical transformation is going to be carried up into the Cytobank platform. Next, what I can do is I can come in and I can click on this green plus sign to add or to modify any FCS keywords. Keywords that are going to be able to be edited are going to show up in green. We can select a keyword and we can edit it. And you can see the new value versus the original value. Next, we hit the next button to move forward. It's going to prompt me to choose to save this data file on my local computer since I'm only saving a subset of these events within this data file. So I'm going to save this. And then it's going to prompt me to either choose an existing experiment that I already have created within my Cytobank cloud. So these are all of the experiments that are currently located in my Cytobank account. Or I can come and I can create a new experiment if I would like to create a new experiment. You can see here I have the experiment name. And I can give it a purpose as well. also add additional comments if I would like and when I click save it's going to create a new experiment for me within the Cytobank cloud from my Calusa plugin and now I can simply click upload it's going to ask me to confirm that I would like to upload my data files into the cloud and when I say yes it's going to start the upload process Once the file has uploaded, you can see that I have the upload successfully. Now I can go into the Cytobank platform to begin any machine learning algorithms on my pre-processed data. So I can click out of this and just load in my Cytobank and log into my Cytobank account. And you can see it loads in my experiment manager where it has the experiment Cytobank, Clusa Cytobank plugin. If I click on that experiment, you can see that it uploaded the data file with all of the single of cell events. If I click on my experiment summary, this is where I can come in now and I can start to run any advanced analysis if I need to. The Calusa Cytobank plugin allows the user to move compensated, transformed, and anonymized data sets from the Calusa desktop software to the Cytobank cloud platform. And that allows us to take advantage of the intuitive compensation adjustments that are supported by Calusa and the machine learning algorithms that are going to be directly integrated in the Cytobank platform. So by combining both the packages, it offers the user flexibility to choose from a broad offering of features and functionalities and to customize their analysis pipelines to fit their research needs.